What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Datadash and today is June 8th of 2022. Well folks, I hope you are having a fantastic day wherever you are and in today's video, I wanna address a critical topic to understand if you are trading or investing in cryptocurrency markets. And I wanna start with a question. Have you ever found yourself in a position where you're buying in to some cryptocurrency or selling a certain cryptocurrency and the market's out to get you, right? When you buy in, prices start going down or when you sell your position, maybe even at a loss, prices immediately start to rebound afterwards. And all the while here, I wanna make it clear that we have to take self-responsibility for our actions. It's also critical that we understand how the market can play into our emotions and get us to do the wrong thing at the wrong time. And that is why we're gonna be talking about market manipulation and the three common ways markets can end up manipulating you through your emotions and through predictability and how you can actually avoid these traps as you're going through your trading journey. Now, this is gonna be a pretty lengthy video here, but I hope you guys will stay tuned for it. If you are trading in markets, it's critical that you understand these things. And the only thing I ask is that if you guys enjoy this content, drop a like. We're gonna be diving into the charts, real examples of this information, and we're gonna get down to the bottom of who's the culprit, who is trying to get you out of your position and make a buck off of your emotions. Let's go ahead and talk about that. We need to know who our enemy is at the end of the day. So. Let's go ahead and kick things off. We're gonna be talking about three different forms of market manipulation here within this special episode. We're gonna be talking about breakout and breakdown traps, which is something that can happen generally on the short term, uh, but sometimes can happen on long-term timeframes. Chasing liquidations, this can happen on a multitude of timeframes and happens incredibly frequently. We'll talk about why this has become a growing issue. And last but not least, something you might've heard about before, known as Wyckoff accumulation and distribution patterns that usually happen over longer-term timeframes, okay? So let's go ahead and get things kicked off here, guys. I'm very excited to dive into this. Now, I wanna first talk a little bit about breakout and breakdown traps. And before we dive into the charts, I just wanna go ahead and draw an example of this. Now, I think many of you are probably in a generally kind of negative sentiment right now. Many of you are concerned about the current state of the market, and it's understandable. Prices are down, sentiment is shot right now. No one's excited about the state of crypto right now. I think anyone with, the, uh, with their two cents would agree that it feels negative right now. And again, as we talked about, market manipulators will thrive off of emotion. And not only do they thrive off of emotion, they know how to get price in a certain direction that is gonna lead you to doing what best benefits them. And again, as we talk later on about who will benefit from this, it all come together, it all makes sense, okay? so. What is the kind of price pattern that is gonna knock you out of your position? That's gonna force you to get even more bearish and not only just be bearish, but with your actions, align your convictions with your actions, okay? To actually, in this case, benefit the market, okay? So let's say, for example, we have Bitcoin's price doing what it did just back a couple of days ago. We generally see here a pattern of consistent, lower, uh, low lows in this case after a steady correction with lower highs here. Now, if you were to see price repeating this pattern here, whether it be Bitcoin or your favorite stock, you are probably gonna fall in the camp of investors who are probably doing what may seem like the right thing, and that's just following the trend. From this point on, you probably think that price is gonna continue going downward, that the momentum is stalled here. And in this case, again, it might make total common sense to think that. But what if I told you that each and every time here for the past few months when we've had a similar pattern like this, um, all the while people continuously turn back to the 2018 bear market where we did see that continued follow through, we've seen immediate rebounds upwards in this case, back up towards relative highs or even starting entire trend reversals for the next few months. And vice versa here, we've also seen another similar pattern here, and we're gonna talk about how in the short term here, we've seen this as well. A lot of consistent higher lows here, consistent resistance, only to be followed not by a breakout to the upside, but a break downward. Why are we seeing this within price? Doesn't it make sense for there to be a follow through of some sort? Well, 
The biggest problem that people have when they're following these patterns and they're seeing the conviction here of the higher lows and consistent resistance range, potentially even formulating an ascending triangle or vice versa when there's lower highs and a consistent range of lows, a descending triangle, right? These are both bullish and bearish patterns under technical analysis. But when market manipulators know that there's enough people watching these patterns, they will use them to their advantage. And that's exactly what's been going on here over the past few days, and really over the past month here, since back in early May. Since early May, we have been in a months long consolidation pattern here for Bitcoin's price. And both the bulls and the bears, I wanna make this very clear, have been tricked. They have been played and the people behind it are making loads of money, getting you knocked out of your positions. And in this case, buying in high and then being forced to sell low, shorting at the lows and getting squeezed out of your positions, okay? So how are they doing this here, right? Again, let's just go ahead and take a look here. How did the bears get trapped here? Well, the bears got trapped here in the short term as we had these generally consistent or lower highs as well as a generally consistent range of uh, lows here. And then after that, we had a capitulation wick down here, the drag price down to 28,000. This is your point here where a lot of people think, oh my God, this is the end of it. It's going down to 20K and we're gonna revisit at least down to this $26,000 and possibly even go lower. And what do you know? We never revisited down to that range. Price uh, rallied here in this case back up. We had the biggest volume candle here on Binance that we'd seen since the capitulation wick back here on May 12th. And on top of that as well, price hanged above this band here, came down and revisited this range and afterwards started to kick up higher towards 32,000. And I think we're seeing the complete opposite here for the bulls here. Now again, we might get some kind of breakout just like how there's a chance of a breakdown, but the thing is here that it's not really good to try to make serious bets in this range. And I'll say that even as someone who's leaning on the longer term time frames is more bullish, right? The bulls here are probably getting played the exact same way, right? We're coming up to this range each and every time. People think that once we close, we're gonna we're so close to closing above this range here back from May 10th. And after that, we're just gonna continue to accelerate in price. Price is just gonna shoot up here. And I gotta go ahead and build my position before it actually happens. That is the key mistake, thinking that you should get into your position before the trend is confirmed, before a breakout is actually established. And on top of that, even if we get a break above or below these general ranges, like we did back here on May 26th, the problem that people do is that when they finally get below that range, they think that's when I gotta go short or that's when I gotta go long. And the problem is, is that until you get a solidification of the trend, until you actually get a daily close or a multitude of hours above that range where you can actually guarantee that you're not gonna revisit back down below here or more likely than not revisit it, then you are likely going to get played by the composite man, you're gonna get played by the market makers. All these people we're gonna talk about later on who know that you're gonna go short or heavier short at that position, trying to catch the momentum of the trade where there's profitability and volatility, or you're gonna go long at that time on that upper band of the range. And as we can see here for the past month, all these people we're gonna talk about later on who run the markets, they've been playing traders like a fiddle. Some traders have made money, they've ridden this wave and they know how to read these kind of patterns. They've been through it before, but the vast majority of traders are losing money during this consolidation pattern. And really, if you think about it as a long-term investor, if you've just been holding Bitcoin here since back in May, you'd be doing perfectly fine. You'd be content, you'd be unchanged. You'd be as rich as you were back a month ago as you likely are today. Whereas traders, on the other hand, they're getting played by the market because the market knows that you understand lower highs, right? And consistent lows, that's a descending triangle and that's generally a bearish pattern and vice versa here. When you're getting these kind of higher lows here over time, right? This kind of accumulation higher, consistent retest of the resistance band here, they are gonna play off of those emotions and knock down price in every time. Look at this, for example, the volume candles here. Interestingly enough, isn't it, that most of these changes, these candles here that really reverse the trend, they have a similar volume profile here, right around this $40,000 range here. It's interesting, isn't it, that generally speaking, 
we're getting very consistent volume profiles here. Perhaps it's not just buyers and sellers changing their minds. Perhaps it's people manipulating the price in the short term. And on top of that, benefiting a whole range of companies who benefit from when you get liquidated out of your position, especially those of you who are trading on margin. And that's the next topic we're gonna to be talking about here. The next thing we're gonna do is talk a little bit about chasing liquidations. Now, this has been happening on the short-term time frame as well, and it plays into this consolidation channel because each and every time when people are going heavily short down at this range, or they're going heavily long in the upper band here, people are losing astronomical amounts of money. And it's not people who have millions uh, to afford to lose, all the while there are some large traders who also get victimized by uh, leverage trading. I'm talking more about where most of the liquidity is made for the institutions and the people behind the scenes. And that's getting you knocked out of your position. Retail traders, everyday people who are putting in probably more than they should. And I'm not trying to insult anyone here, but the, the, the problem is that they um, tie you in with this idea that you should leverage trade and within these short time frames, you can become a millionaire, you can make tons of money. Why wait for the long-term trends when you could just go 5X leverage or 10X leverage or 20X leverage and make a ton of money in the short term when in reality, it's a total setup. And if the market just moves enough percentage points in the wrong direction, the market is gonna force you and a whole range of other people out of their positions, making a lot of money in the process. That's exactly what's been going on here for the past few days, and it's happened multiple times here. During more times, uh, more exacerbated during certain times than others, but again, you can see it happening here in a very short time frame. You guys might even notice here that the price action that we've been seeing here for the past few days has been really weird. Why is it that we're now immediately seeing these moves where Bitcoin goes up $31,000 and then dumping $29,000? Is it that there's just, again, some buyers who decide, ah, oh, I wanna sell it, I actually don't wanna buy back into the market? No, they're not changing their minds. They're getting a necessary price spread it's kind of eight to 7.5% move, depending on which direction you're talking about. They are using this to their advantage because they know that they can easily liquidate all the people who are 10X leverage, 20X leverage, trying to follow the trend in that short period of time right before the market knows they can reverse it and force you out of your positions and make a killing at the same time. Now, this is on the shorter term time frames, but this also plays out here during the corrections. And it's also, again, one of the biggest reflective points I've taken into consideration. As you guys know, uh, we were really excited seeing, again, kind of the higher trend in price here, uh, back here during the first quarter. And one of the biggest learning lessons I had here is especially in this market that is driven by leverage trading, it's driven by credit and borrowed capital, that we need to understand that the worst is likely going to play out here. And I think we got that here. We got capitulation. We got got a weekly candle of over a million BTC uh, across a lot of the major exchanges, a lot of trade volume here. And that's exactly what played out here. The reason why we see this capitulation more times than not, and it's the same here on the way up as well, why we have exacerbated recoveries in price during this bull market is because of the simple fact that right now in this market, leverage is driving price in both directions. And on top of that as well, it's not just uh, people in this case who are leveraged long dragging prices lower, right? When they get liquidated, right? They're getting forced effectively out of their positions. It is also happening on the upside. The reason we're getting exacerbated rallies is not because there's just a whole plethora of new investors coming in. It's that those who are betting excessively short are getting short squeezed. They're getting forced out of their positions. And this leads towards a counter reaction, a price trend higher, right? And this has again been happening in both directions. We tend not to see mid-cycle corrections that go down as far as 55%, or better yet, if you wanna take it back from November um, here towards January, another 52% correction, and for the third time here, again, another upper single digit, um, excuse me, double digit correction here into capitulation. Notice how when the majority of this price action comes through, there's generally these major candles here in the market, a real capitulation move within the market. We can see that these two times here in a very exacerbated degrees, right? And also we can see capitulation here midway through, not as much, but definitely a candle that stands out amongst the general trend. 
right? So this is why we need to understand how important leverage is in the market. Because until we get that capitulation, price is probably gonna continue in that direction, more likely than not. And I think actually, again, to build on this point, that's why even though we had a recovery here, we didn't really get a real capitulation candle like we got back here in May. And I think that's why we got the secondary wave in correction here. It's something we could have definitely learned from, something that I'm definitely gonna learn from in this case, to consider going forward in the future. And that's a very critical point to understand, is that those who stand to benefit, those who run the market in price, are going to drive it down until there is maximum pain. As max pain, as I said many times back a couple months ago, uh, when we were calling for price to revisit down to this $30,000, $35,000 range. There needs to be max pain, max blood on the streets before you start getting buyers who start to revert the trend, who start to outpace those liquidations where price starts to neutralize and starts to trend up in a very exacerbated way, where Bitcoin, for example, went from 26,000 all the way up to 31,000. The majority of your liquidations happened right here, as well as right here. And you can see, again, once you finally have market order flow, buyers coming in who can start to suppress price from going lower and therefore knocking more people out, that's when the trend stops. That's when capitulation is likely over, okay? And again, we can take a look at this here on the longs as well. Again, as I mentioned before, you probably throughout a lot of this period of time, a lot of this late stage rally is probably caused by shorts getting squeezed, right? So again, it's just important to understand that here, that it plays both ways here. There is no way bulls or bears are entirely safe. All we can do is learn how to spot these and trade accordingly, understanding here what's more likely the benefit of us versus the market, okay? so. Very, very important thing here. Understand here that if you are trading with leverage, you need to keep it moderate. And I, I don't mean to speak too much from a position of authority here, but I got, I'd be very confident with you guys in saying you need to use moderate levels of it. And understand here, and I'll go ahead and actually show a great visual representation of why this is such a big deal. Um, just know that if you are trading with too much leverage, at the end of the day, most people who trade with large degrees of leverage do not make money. The overwhelming majority, 98% plus, lose money more than they would just simply long-term investing. And understand here just how severe the problem is. Just in last night's move when we were up in the $31,000 to $31,500 range, right? a $500 price spread for Bitcoin, there were dozens on dozens of Bitcoin liquidated just on Binance futures alone, mind you. If we're talking about across all the exchanges, we're talking about hundreds of Bitcoin forever being lost from the underlying positions of investors and traders, many of which are probably everyday people. And the last thing I want for you is to get caught, you to get caught up in that position. And that's why on this channel, again, if you guys I, I speak about it very confidently here. I'm not perfect at the end of the day, but I'll tell you guys, this is why you will never see a Bybit or FTX link under my channel. It's like promoting a casino. And I would never want to put you in a position where you could lose everything in the flip of a trade. It's not to say that all these liquidations are that, but for the majority of people participating in leverage trading, that's how they go. They put everything in and they put a high degree of leverage, hoping that they're gonna make some killer return. So again, I would go ahead and not listen to people who are promoting those links to you. All right, they might have some valuable TA, they might even be genuinely good people, but I gotta tell you all, uh, you just let's just put it this way. I don't think you would respect me or anyone else if you had a casino uh, referral link or a gambling referral link under their channel and they're talking about reasonably trading, right? I hope you get my drift there, basically. Right? Don't mean to spill any bad blood, but I don't want that blood to be you losing in the markets, okay? Sorry, I get a bit heated about that. But anyways, let's go ahead, continue on the conversation here. Let's keep our time productive. The third thing we're gonna talk about is Wyckoff accumulation and distribution. And this, all the while it can happen in short-term timeframes, generally happens over uh, kind of mid to long-term timeframes, okay? Now, Wyckoff accumulation and distribution has become a much more popular theme of discussion because of how clearly Bitcoin's price over the past few um, years, really since back in 2021, 
has been playing off of the Wyckoff method, okay? So we first need to understand here uh, what the two types of, um, generally speaking, the two types of methods in Wyckoff are. There is accumulation and distribution, okay? These are fancy terms for buying and selling. Now, overall, you guys might have heard me mention earlier the term the composite man. And this is the analogy that's utilized to understand those who are trading against us, the institutions, okay? And we don't know who they are. There is no such thing as the exact composite man. But imagine the composite man is a metaphor for the person who is trading against your emotions and needs to thrive off of your emotions in order to properly buy in at a favorable price and sell at a favorable price. And think of this person as someone who needs to really build a position that's massive. I'm talking hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars. And it's very difficult to move that amount of liquidity unless there is market order flow, i.e. you, to be on the opposite side of the trade, being there to sell your crypto so that they can buy it at a nice fresh discount and get it in a, prob a proper entry and vice versa. They need you to buy overvalued positions when the FOMO is real and the excitement is there so that they can liquidate and sell their positions and go back to cash, locking in profits. And this cycle will repeat over and over again because people don't understand how the composite man or the institutions, how they play into your emotions. So they generally need to have an oversold period so they can buy an overbought period so they can start to sell, sell into the demand, right? The problem here has to do with supply and demand here. When there is an over amount of supply in the market, that's when accumulators will buy and vice versa. When the market is overbought, there's so much demand, little supply, they provide the supply. They start to distribute. They start to sell. Okay, so this is the really critical thing here to understand. And there's a few different patterns here, otherwise known as schematics. There are two key schematics for both accumulation and distribution. But if we take a look at them real quickly here, all the while, I definitely recommend you should dive in to the key stages of Wyckoff, uh, the Wyckoff accumulation and distribution patterns, which are listed here. You can find this, uh, this is school.stockcharts.com. And if you simply look up Wyckoff patterns, you'll be able to find these charts. But essentially, accumulation schematics are basically very similar in nature. And they signal price action here that the people again who were dictating price in the short term, they set up price to look like this so that they can get the proper market order flow during peak fears of time. So they are able to accumulate the positions and therefore then drive the trend higher so that they can be in the green on their positions. This is again, very similar uh, patterns here and not to mention as well, the same is basically for distribution. There are two key patterns and they show very similar uh, scenarios. Generally speaking, all the while we've got our important points here, the major thing here to consider is that all the while you still got those higher lows and higher highs, you've got a rollover in the trend here, a slowing of momentum here, where again, all that demand is still hot during this period of time, but they're starting to sell into these waves of strength here where market order flow is exacerbated, right? And continuing to again, still take positions off throughout this period of time. And again, we can see that there's very strong similarities between these two patterns. Again, I don't want to spend too much time focusing extensively on these different plays here, but it is important to understand that that is exactly what played out here against the bulls back here in 2021. A clear Wyckoff distribution pattern here, dragging prices lower and vice versa here. We got a pretty textbook, ex textbook example of the counter opposite of accumulation right? Multiple retests of those lows, panicking the everyday investor thinking, oh my God, it's going down to 20K, when in reality, it accelerated higher. Shorts got liquidated. Price went up higher. The same exact trend happening in the reversed pattern. It's highway robbery that unfortunately most of us just simply don't understand. And it works like it fits like a glove on the market effectively. They know that it's gonna work time and time again because no matter if you're trading Bitcoin or Apple stock, it's playing off of human emotions and human emotions are what drive exacerbated periods of time of optimism as well as sell-offs and fear in the market. So this is very, very important to understand here. And as we've gone through this correction here, this capitulation, and we're hanging down along this lower range here, again, I would say to be careful and cautious 
of getting caught up in another uh, similar pattern to like what we saw back here in May of 2021. We're not seeing a real clear pattern just yet. I don't know if I'd wanna say that it's full on Wyckoff just yet, but I would say here to just be a little cautious here and not jump to conclusions until we actually get some kind of clear trend one way or the other. Like a lot of people got too confident of back here in May of 2021 into July of 2022, uh, 2021, expecting that it would just go down, okay? So we've talked a lot about these different types of ways markets can manipulate us. I think the question on many of your minds now, the ultimate question is, who's out to get me? Who are the people behind these methods of market manipulation and basically counter trading against me in order to make a buck off my money? Well, let's go ahead and talk about the names you've probably heard me mention before. There are three major categories of culprits here, and I do have them in order here. The first one is derivatives exchanges. I think nothing is more proof in the pudding than taking a look here at our partner tool book map. It's one of my favorite tools out there, guys. I can't emphasize it enough if you're looking for an additional tool outside of TradingView to bolster your trading activity and do better in the market using Bookmap's liquidation tracker, which just launched as a reason. It's one of the best ways to see this. And if you guys are interested, you can get 20% off at the link down below in the description if you're interested. But to the key point here, we can see the metrics do not lie here. There was dozens upon dozens of Bitcoin liquidated in just a matter of about an hour, hour and a half here in this chart, and it's constantly happening within the market price. So the sooner you realize here that the exchanges can trade against you, it's not just the bulls or the bears, it's the exchanges that are trading against you, specifically the derivatives exchanges. That is the biggest telltale sign you'll know of whether or not you're buying it at a discount or you're being able to take profits at a heightened price and be able to step out of the market. And that's again where liquidations can really help you here. If you can follow these dominoes liquidations and you see a slowdown, oh look at that, right afterwards the market starts to trend in the other direction. The shorts get squeezed. And then after the shorts stop getting squeezed, the longs start getting squeezed. The exchanges make money both ways. They're playing you guys like a fiddle when you trade with too much leverage. So again, I, I don't wanna uh, speak in the case that everyone's using leverage, but those of you who are taking that risk, just know that it's not the bulls or the bears. It is the derivatives exchanges. Those who are allowing you to trade on margin, giving you the opportunity to trade on margin and lose a lot of money. The second thing here are the whales and larger investors. They are the ones who are playing into these patterns. They have studied the methods of Wyckoff. They have all the connections to market makers and people who can basically create these scenarios that inevitably lead you trading into emotional waves of price action, thereby being able to force you out in the other direction and benefit in this case, right? They can get their markets, a mark, uh, excuse me, their, um, their limits filled in this case, their limit bids on the order book, right? So setting limit orders to get a lot of positions filled here in the lows. And then afterwards, as sell side pressure subsides, as they've gotten their orders filled, price starts to drive up and they start to distribute here in the short term, right? So it can happen on short term timeframes and longer term timeframes here. And last but not least, you've got hedge funds and market makers who make a pretty penny off of all of the trading volume or other advanced strategies during these consolidation channels, as well as other types of trading patterns. These are the major culprits here that you need to be aware of here. And all the while, I think we could sit here and say yes, that these people are definitely uh, thinking in their own selfish interest, that they're trading against us. We need to be honest at the reality that hey, we're thinking in our own selfish interest as well. We wanna make money in the market. There's nothing wrong about that. And to be completely honest, could you blame them for being in that position and having a clear way to make money, right? If you were in their shoes, would you do the same? Maybe not, maybe so. I don't know if it'd be the first thing I'd wanna do with my life is, uh, you know, even though I'd have a way to do it, I, taking money from retail traders doesn't sound like the first thing I'd really wanna do. It doesn't sound really nice. but. Whether or not people would like to say they do it or not, there are people out there doing it. And the fact of the matter is, is that we need to learn how to spot it. We need to learn how to adjust our trading strategies, not to follow our emotions, but a predictable winning strategy that understands these principles of how market dynamics actually work. And until you can understand these things, trading is something you should stay far away from. 
You're much better off long-term investing. And the only way you can be a part of the successful traders that actually win more than just simply long-term investing and don't just lose everything, you've got to understand these principles, hands down. Until you understand how the composite man works, how you understand how the exchanges work and the dynamics of this market, you can never truly understand where price is going to go next. All right, guys, I rambled on long enough here. If you enjoyed this video, consider dropping a like, consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon so you don't miss another video. And a great way to support the channel, if you guys are interested in using tools like Bookmap, who's one of our partners here in the channel, you can check out the link down below in the description, as, as I mentioned earlier, get 20% off. But I wanna hear from you guys down below in the comments. What do you think about this conversation? Is there anything that I missed? Anything that you think I really hit on well? I'd love to hear from you guys down below in the comments, get a discussion going. But until the next one, thank you all so much for watching watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care everyone.